Hey everyone, uh, this is Eric uh, from howtoprogramcode.com. Um, today I wanted to show you something that I <clears throat> found the other day in GitHub um, that kind of was was pretty cool to see um, because I guess it's things like this that you don't really think anyone else is developing and you don't really see a need, but this is kind of interesting. I, uh, I probably won't be using it personally, um, it's missing some things that I truly would like, but um, you might find it useful. Um, anyway, so it's the terminal. It's a terminal for the terminal emulator, keyword there, um, for the 21st century. So let's just open up my current terminal. This is the one I typically use. I have it configured to be the, um, you know, to have inverted colors, black, black background with a little bit of transparency so I can see things behind me. Um, it's just my workflow, it's just what I like to do. I have a, a ZSH installed um, to help me um, with several autocomplete functions and other programming and scripting stuff that I'm using, um, as well as um, some themes. I can switch my theme quite easily on my terminal, um, but I have it set up the way I want. Um, and this is the way it looks every time I load it. So I'm happy with this. Um, let's just go do an ls-al and in my root directory of my Mac these are all the files I have um, and the reason I want to do this is because I'm gonna go ahead and open up the other one which is called black screen which is the modern um, emulator for the 21st century and just quickly I'll read what it is um, what is it it says the black screen is an IDE in the world of terminals Strictly speaking, it's both a terminal emulator and an interactive shell based on Electron. Also, unlike most of the emulators you can meet nowadays, it uses HTML and CSS for its UI, exactly like Atom does. Which means we can stop misusing Unicode characters and make a better looking terminal with appropriate tools. So it's cool that they're trying to do that. It's also receiving quite a few stars um, among the uh, GitHub community. But you know, honestly, if you're someone who you know doesn't have a problem with the terminal, you're more worried about your syntax and your code that you're working on and your applications, this might not be for you. Um, but if it is, feel free to contribute to them. Um, to this, it's an open source project, so just install it by Git cloning this repo and seeding into the directory, npm install, and then run npm start, and you should be running a, um, an application that looks like this that you can contribute to and, and mess around and make it your own and um, do what you need with it. Um, now, the way I installed it was I went to releases, um, which there are two releases. There's a test release, and then there's a version 0.0.2. .0 I grabbed 0.0.2, which is very early, everyone, um, you know, install um, uh, with caution. And I should also um, note, I should also tell you that this only works on Mac at the moment. Um, so Windows users, you can just stop um, watching this now or use it on your spare Mac if you have one. Um, but yeah, so just download the black.screen.zip folder, um, put it somewhere that you know, and then um, drag the, I believe there's an app icon that you have to drag over into your, um, I don't know why I just did that again, I've already installed it, um, but I believe you have to drag it over in your application folder and that's basically it. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and, yes, I was right, so just drag this over the black screen app to your application folder. I deleted mine because I already have it installed. Um, let's go back to black screen. Let's um, tell you a little bit more about what it does. It supports auto-completion out of the box, which is great. It tries to be as smart as possible um, and suggest things that are relevant to your context of what you're looking for or trying to um, tell the terminal to do, such as a command. Um, it works with Git. It works with um, other technologies. It's um, another bash command. So you... Um, yeah, you can run certain scripts with this. It looks like run, root, repo, restart, rebuild. Um, there's quite a few you, quite a few things you can do, and probably you, there's probably going to be a plethora of 
more um, configuration options in the future. Um, uh, so with that said, let's just take a look at what it is in comparison to, whoops, I keep, see, that's the other thing. I'm stuck in typing in terminal, <laughs> and I'm not stuck typing in black screen, so it would take a little bit of workflow change for me to, uh, to start using this a little bit more. Also, I noticed that you can't do transparent or translucent um, design with this, but like I like they did mention um, in their README file, they use CSS and HTML, so you could probably do that. However, um, I don't know if Electron allows you to get past that layer to actually show you. I could be wrong. I've played with Electron quite a bit, and I wasn't able to do that, um, but things may have changed. It's been a while. Um, but so this is what the terminal looks like um, when you start it up. Let me just do this. So this is what the terminal, I'm sorry, this is what the terminal looks like on the left, um, the Mac OS terminal when you start it up. And this is what black screen looks like on the right, the terminal editor, or emulator for the 21st century. Um, let's just do the same commands in each one. So let's say ls al, okay, and let's do ls. I already noticed off the bat that this does the autocomplete, which is very, very helpful if you forget the command name. Um, you know, that's that's really nice, um, super, super helpful. Also super, super dangerous if you're not careful. Um, auto complete can, uh, you know, can, can kind of set you up for failure if you're not watching what you're doing. Um, I like, personally, I like typing in my commands. Um, but, you know, when I, it just kind of, um, as a, uh, as a side note, whenever you're working with, um, the terminal, always be careful before you hit enter on, you know, um, I've, I've destroyed directories before that were very, very important. Um, and that happens. So, um, just be careful. All right. So right off the bat, um, oh, I should actually do this. I should clear this out and I should go to my, um, root directory. Let's just do this. And then let's do LSAL here. Now, one thing you're going to notice right away is that you lose real estate because the font size is too big. And um, I could also move this up, such as like this. I could blow the window up, and you know you'd get the same effect. Um, I personally like my font size over here on the normal terminal. I'm not so you know thrilled with this, although it looks good. It's just that I like to have more real estate at all times whenever I'm working. So these are just some differences that I find. This is nothing that you have to do or change. You may like it the way you like it. Um, and then um, the other thing that I'd like to show you is let's just go into an actual um, an actual repo that has some content. So to say, um, let's say Heroku. I have some stuff there. Actually, no, let's say React. Um, Let's say React Web. Let's see what we have in here. And let's just say React Launch Page, sure. Um, and I can say Git. I'm just typing in Git, and I basically get this window that shows me um, all kinds of things. So if I can go Git and I hit space, I get Git Add. Um, I get Git AM. I get Git Archive. I get all these different Git functions that I could apply. Um, and if I type a little bit more, like let's say git reset, um, okay, so now it's getting me even closer. Now it says, okay, whoops, reset. And then, whoa. Yeah, I do mean that. So let's say git reset. Um, okay. And then we can continue on with this. So we could say hard head. Oh, it doesn't autocomplete any further than that. That's interesting. Oh, it's not a repo. Okay, well, let's just say git init. All right. Well, it doesn't autocomplete the way I thought it would. There we go. Okay. So now we have a git repository. Let me clear this out. And let's say git again. And let's say git reset. Ah, git reset. It's taking me a little bit of time to get used to this. I would think that it's highlighted, so I'd hit enter but you actually have to click on it. Um, let's say let's get, get reset hard head. Um, and then just hit enter. Okay, it doesn't have anything because we don't have a head. 
in our new repo that we just created with the git init command. Um, okay, that's fine. I guess I was just trying to show you some auto-completion tools. Now the other thing that I've noticed is that, say I want to open up Atom, which is the IDE that I use. If I do Atom, whoops, if I could only spell Atom, Atom dot, let's just open up the directory that I'm in by hitting Atom dot, which should be um, using the program. It's saying open this program with this directory. Um, and that's that, and if I hit enter, I get this error. And this is something that is frustrating to me because it knows the application is here, but it just doesn't execute it. Um, and this function isn't working, basically. Now, if I do atom over here, I do the same thing, and I go, wait, one second. Let's just grab this directory here. Oh, sorry about that. And we just say, um, over here in this directory, we'll say cd, go into there, and we say atom over here. Then it opens up Atom in that directory just like we wanted. So that's really great. Um, you know, it's just that the um, the black screen app isn't working for that, and that's sort of frustrating to me as well. So you lose some real estate. Um, you you there's a few things that are the workflow is different. You don't have the transparent screen. Um, the other thing too is let's say cat and let's say index. Say we cat that out, um, cat index, okay. All right, so it doesn't look like syntax highlighting is on for either of these. Um, I know with, um, uh, well actually cat probably wouldn't do it, but I think I can do nano index, right, I don't have that installed. I can say edit index, no. I can say vi index, there we go. And vi index. Okay, so it works on both ends. That's cool. Um, okay. And what else? Um, that's kind of cool too that it leaves the history. I do like that the way it shows the history. It didn't do that <clears throat> for this vi window. Um, that's kind of cool. But <clears throat> I don't know. For me, I think I'm going to stick with my terminal over here on the left. It's just, I like the workflow. I don't really see a need to switch. Um, and, you know, but you may like it. You may find it useful um, to use black screen. Once again, um, check it out. They're doing a great job, this developer. And the open source community has created something really fantastic with this uh, terminal emulator for the 21st century black screen. Um, be sure to star them, fork them, play around with it, and see what you guys think. Um, as always, thanks for watching these videos, and please check out howtoprogramcode.com, and check out our um, YouTube channel, and uh, follow us on the social internets. Alright guys, thanks so much, have a great one.